this video is an intro to people who want to get the 10 PC badge in Tetrio or want to learn how to PC in general. In this video, I will be only focusing on 4-line PCs. To learn more PCs, I would recommend you to join the PC Gang, link down in the description. This video will be suitable for Tetris players who have at least learned the basics of Tetris. For example, hard dropping, soft dropping, spinning the pieces, and many more. It is recommended to learn how Tetris works before watching this video. I am sure most of you guys watching this video probably already have played Tetris before. In Tetris, there are seven different Tetraminos. T, J, L, I, O, S, and Z. Most modern Tetris games, for example Tetrio, Gestris, PPT 1 and 2, and many more, use a system called the 7-bag randomizer, which basically says that the first 7 Tetraminos will always be the 7 different Minos, but in random order. The next 7 pieces will also be the 7 different Minos, but also in random order. For example, here I will just hard drop 7 pieces you will see that the first 7 pieces are the 7 different tetraminos in Tetris. Here, I will also hard drop the next 7 pieces. And as you can see, the next 7 pieces are also the 7 different tetraminos in Tetris, just in another order. We call the first 7 pieces the first back, and then the second 7 pieces the second back, and so on. That is basically the 7 back randomizer. Spins and kicks are really important in PCs. For example, the S and Z spins, the L and J spins, the I spins, and of course, T spins. There are more spins and kicks that are useful in PCing, but these spins should be enough for most of the solves to finish a 10 PC. You can learn these at 4.0 or Wowie's videos. Hundred eighty spins are spins that allow you to spin the piece hundred eighty degrees instantly instead of spinning it ninety degrees. It is useful for some tucks that are normally not possible. So make sure you know where your hundred eighty spin key is binded to. You might need it someday. Before we go into PC numbers, I am going to ask a question: How many pieces are required for a four-line PC? The answer is 10. You will need 10 pieces to complete a single 4-line PC. It is easy to see that this is the case. Each tetramino in Tetris takes up 4 blocks, and for a single line clear in Tetris, you would clear 10 blocks. So clearing 4 lines means clearing 40 blocks, which would take 10 pieces to do so. From here on, things will start to get a little bit more confusing. So please do pause the video or rewatch the part you don't understand. For your first PC, since you start with a fresh bag, you will use all the 7 pieces in the first bag and another 3 pieces from the second bag. So the bag composition will be 7 plus 3. For your second PC, you will use the remaining 4 pieces in the second bag and 6 pieces in the 3rd bag, so it will be 4 plus 6. For the 3rd PC, you will be left with 1 extra piece in the 3rd bag, and it will always be in your hold. So you have to use all the 7 pieces in the 4th bag, and 2 pieces from the 5th bag to complete your perfect clear, which is 1 plus 7 plus 2. So for your 4th PC, it will be 5 plus 5, the 5th will be 2 plus 7 plus 1, and for your 6th, it will be 6 plus 4, and for 7th, it will be 3 plus 7. Now when you are doing the 8th PC, 
assuming that you don't use the next back's pieces, you will notice that the back composition, 7 plus 3, is exactly the same as the first PC. Therefore, we are back to first PC. However, if you did use one of the pieces from the next pack, you would instead go to 8th PC. It is when one piece X replaces another piece Y in a new bag. We say this is X replaced Y, usually denoted as X greater than Y. For example, this 7th PC is usually solved like this, that uses all 7 pieces in its own bag. However, there is an alternative solution that uses an I in the next bag instead of a T. In this case, this eighth will be called T replaced I, denoted by T greater than I. Eighth PC will not be included in this video, but document links will be provided down in the description. There is also a ninth PC, but due to its insane rarity, it will not be discussed in this video as well, but document links will also be provided. This is the loop for the 7 perfect clear patterns. Assuming only 4 line perfect clears are done, for perfect clears a multiple of 7 apart, they will be identical to each other. Normally we will refer to perfect clears higher than 7 to its original form. For example, the 12th PC will be normally referred to as the 5th PC, or the 23rd PC will be referred to as the 2nd PC. For example, assume all perfect clears are 4 line perfect clears. What is the equivalent PC number of the 34th PC? The answer is the 6th PC. If you want to figure out what PC you're on by using the number of pieces used, there is a formula for it. For example, what PC are you on if you have used 450 pieces so far, assuming that your field is empty? The answer is the 4th PC. In the last part, we have learned about the 7 different forms of perfect clears. Now, we are going to learn how to actually execute a perfect clear. There are two parts of perfect clearing, the setup and the solve. Setups are patterns for you to memorize and help increase the solving chances for every PC. I'm going to briefly talk about setups for all 7 PCs. There is more information on Small Fish's channel about 1st, 2nd, and 3rd PCs. All setups introduced here will not include mirror cases, so keep that in mind. If you are a beginner, I would recommend you to learn the PCO first. This setup has a 61.19% solve chance, which is usually considered low. However, if you can hold the eyepiece, the solve chance will increase to 84.64%. It is recommended to learn most of the PCO solves, as PCO solving patterns will come up quite often in different PCs. There is also a website for you to practice PCO solves by Chocotia. After learning the two PCO builds, you could go ahead and learn the grace system. It is a 6x4 box setup with 88.57% solve chance, which is even higher than PCO hold I. With T in hold, most of the time you will convert back into a PCO solve by placing the T beside the box. Also, when solving these setups, saving a T piece for the second PC will increase the solve rate for your second PC. For more advanced setups, you can refer to these. The PCO plus heart pattern looks like this in general. You can build the PCO part like this, 
and you can do the hard part like this. It might be one of the most common setup for second with T. It also has a good chance to save T or save O. If you build a tub, then try your best to find a save O solve, because saving S or Z would not be great for third PC. Here are some example solves that use S and Zs. You will see this quite often if you don't save T from first PC. There are three main ways to close off the box in the setup. IJ, LZ, and SZJ. Other than closing the box, there are also solves that involve skims for the setup. Note that saving T is impossible in the setup, so try your best to save O. You can also make a 4x4 box in your second PC setup when you are not sure what to do. Here are some ways to make the box. Although the 4x4 box in the second PC is 100%, it is one of the hardest setup in the second PC. So it is recommended that you learn the solves before building the setup. 4.lol has a page on second setups, but they are a bit outdated, and a lot of them lead to save S or Z third, instead of saving O or T. Marfon made a document for second PC setups. I will be linking it down in the description. If you have an extra O in your third PC, look for a two-line opportunity. It will lead you to TSC 7, which is one of the easiest 7th if you know it. If you are new to this, I would recommend learning Bring That first. It is a 7P setup that has a 90% solve chance. Here are some other setups that you could possibly do. With extra T, there are a lot of 100% setups that exist. Most of them will vary from the anti-PCO setup. So if you can do this, it will be really good. If you see an L coming early, then build it to the right side. If you see a J coming early, then build it to the left side. There are a lot of ways to close off the anti-PCO box. And there are a lot of times where your T will be placed in these positions. So do look for solutions from there. If you can build PCO with eye help and extra T, it will be really good as it is 97%. For an extra L, there are some 100% setups, but you wouldn't be able to build them most of the time. You could build a 4x4 box like this. It has a 99% solve chance, but it will be hard to solve. We have talked about Grace System for first PC. Similarly, you can also build the Grace System with extra L. There are three main ways to build this, so do look out if you can build the Grace System. Extra J will be the same thing, but all the setups will be mirrored. For extra I, there is a good chance you can build the Brain Dead setup that is similar to extra O. There are also 100% shapes for extra I. Although Shu is not 100%, it is still 99.64%, which is quite reliable. Extra S or Z is the worst third PC you can ever get, as a lot of 100% patterns are really hard to build. Here are some good shapes that you can try to make. The best way to get out of the situation is to not even save S or Z in the first place. This part is normally referred to as the freestyle phase. Setups do exist, but they are very numerous in magnitude. So you will have to dedicate way more time than learning first to third. Therefore, if you do not wish to learn setups for now, the alternative is to look at the queue and make good accommodating freestyle setups. Common situational freestyle setups include legs, jaws, shoe, elephant, anti-PCO, Jeremy, and box. If you want to learn setups for the long term, the links will be provided below. For 7th PC, almost all of the setups will be 100%. Here, I will introduce 6 easiest setups that you can learn. To learn more, go to 4.long.
after you know how to do setups, here are some tips to solve different setups. Closing boxes from a setup. Shoe setups can be boxed by using SJ or IL or SCL. Leg setups can be boxed by using LS, JZ, LO or JO. Imagine these pieces completing the box and you would usually require less spring power to solve a certain setup. Look for dependencies. Top setups will always have a TZ or TS dependency, and this setup will always have a TO dependency no matter what. If you can look for dependencies in your setup, the blocks needed to be placed will be limited so you can focus on the rest of the board. Avoid dependencies if you are not guaranteed that it will be filled with the right piece at the right timing. Watch pro players replay. Watching pro players replay will make you realize, hey, you can also solve it like that. I personally watch a lot of Holy Fire's Tetris replays, and I learn a lot of souls from it. I also watch Smallfish's PC run analysis sometimes. Watch your own PC replays. Knowing what you went wrong is really important. See what went wrong in the last solve. Or maybe you are tunnel visioning for a certain solving pattern. You will be able to spot your bad habits through watching your own replays. You can also put in your missed PCs into tools such as PC Finder or S Finder to check if it really did not have a solution. However, use this as the last resort. Get into a PC room with someone good. A PC room is basically a textual lobby, where two players try to find solutions in a 1v1 setting. It will take a lot of time, and it might be frustrating at first. But having someone better guiding you through PCs will help you learn new setups and find better solutions. PC gang members do this quite a lot. Join the PC gang Discord server. This server has quite a lot of resources for PCs and you could ask questions there. The pros there are most likely going to reply you in less than 10 minutes. There are also a lot of creative shapes or solve users can see and share.